Hi folks. If you are an electronics engineering graduate in India, which you most likely will be if you are an engineer, uh, for good or for bad, uh, uh, and if you are thinking about joining for a masters, many of you I have heard have been confused uh, with what is the difference between microelectronics and embedded systems. It's like there are masters M Tech in microelectronics and VLSI, which is one M Tech course that is. popularly offered by institutions across the country and there is mtech in embedded systems correct many even uh, who those pe- people who have even finished mtech many of them are confused about what is the difference between microelectronics and embedded systems so in this video i would like to briefly uh, tell you what are the core difference in a very simple way between microelectronics the field of microelectronics and the field of embedded systems okay so uh, embedded systems as a word implies from the word systems itself you should be able to guess uh, what that field is about and what microelectronics is about okay so microelectronics and vlsi what is vlsi vlsi is very large scale integration so you you know about ics integrated circuits right My, microelectronics is bothered about making designs for fabricating chips or ics so let's say for example i have here uh, the aria 10 fpga okay aria 10 soc fpga soc system on chip system on chip fpga i'll just show this to you yeah altera aria 10 soc fpga okay this has 1072 balls these are balls this is the ball grid array this is what we use to assemble this chip onto a pcb pcb is a printed circuit board now the microelectronics the field of microelectronics is bothered or concerned with how to make this chip okay so the processes involved are mostly coding if you go for a microelectronics based job even or or or, or you learn the field of microelectronics you understand what are the transistors what are mosfets how can you make analog circuits with mosfets how can you make digital circuits with mosfets how do you integrate lot of uh, circuit blocks with mosfets but then you you design the circuit by coding them up in verilog okay verilog is hard, verilog is a hardware description language you make a design in verilog you may build a test bench around it to test your design then you synthesize this whole design maybe you can make so this is one i say again told this is an soc fpga this is like a computer in itself but it doesn't do any job so long as it doesn't form a part of a pcb it doesn't get any power it needs to get at least power to switch on right so but microelectronics is not bothered about that microelectronics only wants to make this ic and give it to you okay so that is the field of microelectronics it's about very large scale integration you make verilog system verilog code you synthesize your code you get something called netlist if you are not understanding any of these words please message me below i can make an elaborate video about about these terms you make you get netlist you make something called a gerber file that file is used by semiconductor manufacturing factories like taiwan semiconductor manufacturing corporation tsmc or intel even to fabricate this chips from your design from the design that you make but then this chip is not a system this chip just just this chip becomes a system that can be used only when it forms part of a printed circuit board that has some sense of a working it works towards attaining a goal this system this chip gives you potential usages potential powers to do a lot of things but it's not actually doing it Microelectronics is not bothered about what you want to do with this chip. Microelectronics is only bothered about making and giving this chip to you, because making this chip itself involves a lot of effort. So now I think I don't even have to describe to you what is embedded systems, right? Now embedded systems is a field that uses these ICs to make application-specific PCBs. Okay, even ICs, ICs can be very much as application-specific. This is a general-purpose IC. This is like a processor. this can do a lot of things it can even has an fpga but there are ics like a, a power module that can generate 5 volt for you ic that's an application specific integrated circuit that's what is called asic okay application specific integrated circuit asics 
general purpose ICs, there are a lot of ICs and microelectronics field builds all of this, okay, clear. Next you have, let us say I have this Raspberry Pi, latest Raspberry Pi 3 with me. So, I will just show it to you. So, this is the Raspberry Pi 3, okay, I think all of you can see. This Pi 3 has lot of ICs in it, see, he, this guy, this guy, this is the main processor, you have an Ethernet jack, you have an Ethernet IC. All these individual ICs are made by people who know microelectronics, okay. But then to make them useful as a product that can be sold, that can interface with the outside world, that can communicate with another physical system, you need a PCB to connect these ICs to build a story around it, to build an, a story that you can understand. What does this PCB do? It can talk through Ethernet jack, it has a USB port, it can communicate with the system, it can ping to another system, it can boot an operating system on this processor, correct? It has an SDMI port, you can even display it, you can have an OS, you can connect your keyboard to these USB ports and you can even use it as a computer. So this is an embedded system, because why it is embedded? The functionality is embedded in this PCB and the code operating system is embedded inside this IC. So this is embedded system. So embedded system would have a lot of hands-on design, PCB design. You will have to sit and draw your circuit. You might have to route your PCBs. You have to, th you have to think about signal integrity problems. You have to think about interference problems, electromagnetic interference, electrostatic discharge, all these issues you have to take care while you design. So the, the kind of design constraints, difficulties that you feel face in the field of embedded system is hugely different from the field of microelectronics. In microelectronics, you have to think about timing violations. So let's say you have a, uh, let's say you have a memory block inside this IC. That memory block is reading memory from some other memory block, let's say. And when it is reading, let's say it is reading from 10 data data lines. All data has to come to it at the same time. If some some bits come uh, differently, then you will basically be saving wrong data. That is called timing violation. Set up and hold time. All these things have to be taken care of while you write the code and while you generate the final netlist for to be fabricated. Till then, you have no physical understanding about what your IC will be. You have to work in the dark with your with the experience that you have gained over the years. That are those are the challenges in microelectronics. But in embedded systems, it is, these are more practical challenges. In the sense, you have to practical challenges since you can't do simulations on embedded systems. You can always do gate level simulations on this IC and switch on and off each individual transistor in this and see what happens. You can play with it. You can't do that with a PCB. You can test it only after you fully assemble it. You give your input, you give your voltages, you see if your LED is glowing or not. So this involves cost. Let's say your PCB is using a very expensive IC. This is an Ariat and SOC. This one chip costs 1.8 lakhs. Okay. And if you are using this IC in a, in a PCB and you have put a power supply, this IC can take only 10 volt, you give 15 volt and the IC blows up, your 1.8 lakhs is gone. So you should, you need a different set of skill set to be able to debug this PCB, bring it up to full functionality and test it out. You will also have to write firmware code for it. You will have to write C code for the software level, firmware level. You need, you will have a firmware level, you have a software level that runs on top of that. You need to write code for it because you are going to finally deliver on system. So if you are interested in system development, product development, embedded system might be a field for you. If you are more interested with the intricacies of how MOSFETs work, how I can make in big big CPUs, processing units with your basic understanding of MOSFETs, micro microelectronics might be of interest to you. So these are this is these are actually entirely different fields which are tied down by fundamental concepts of electronics. But many don't know the difference between these two fields, so I wanted to introduce you to these uh, two fields. Hope uh, this was helpful to you. I know I have covered so many terms in this short time. Uh, you can always ask me. I can make a detailed, more elaborate video to make you understand these sub terms in PCB design or in microelectronics because I have worked in both the fields. Thank you.